This morning, we're at anchor in Kalama Bay at the mouth of the King George River. After breakfast, we're in the Explorer, cruising up the King George River, marveling at more of Kimberly's impressive scenery. The river flows through relatively weathering resistant Wharton sandstone. About 20 million years ago, the uplift of the Kimberley Plateau started the erosion by the river that resulted in a zigzag river course through cliffs of sandstone that are up to 250 feet high. To me, this rock looks like a caricature of Ronald Reagan. This was once a broad valley with a meandering stream. When the water level rose about 18,000 years ago, the valley became a tidal estuary. On the rocks closest to the water, we see a curious, almost worm-eaten look. These small, hollowed-out features are called tophoni. There are many theories about what causes this phenomena, which is found all over the world, especially in intertidal areas and deserts. The most likely cause here is salt heaving. Salt is deposited on the rock by the retreating tide. The water evaporates and the salt crystallizes in the pores of the sandstone. The crystals pry apart the rock grains and leave the rock vulnerable to other kinds of erosion. When the familiar red and black protective layer on the sandstone is removed, it exposes the beautiful white, blue, and purple stone underneath. The rock can be finely lined. Or boldly patterned. The broad estuary continues to snake its way into the plateau for seven and a half miles. If anything, the cliffs seem to grow higher and the rocks more precarious. Then around the next bend, we see our destination, dramatic twin waterfalls. Each is impressive in its own right, but to have them side by side is spectacular. The most intrepid of our group has climbed to the top of the falls. Now we're going to take a close and potentially wet look at the waterfall. For some, that wasn't wet enough. So for them, we have the Zodiac ride through the big falls. They look wet, but happy. If you didn't get wet enough yet, you get to do it again. Then it's time to head back down the King George River to Kalama Bay. On the way back, we see even more amazing rocks that we missed on the way in. We stop at the appropriately named Tranquil Bay. Behind the beach is a lagoon, sandstone cliffs, and a small waterfall. The beach is dotted with beach morning glories. Rocks polished by the small stream show the colors and patterns of the sandstone. Then back to the coral discoverer. It's a long way to the next stop, the Tiwi Islands. Our captain has taken us to Bathurst Island, one of the Tiwi Islands. The village of Warami Yanga grew up around this Catholic mission, which was founded in 1911. St. Teresa's is the Mission Church. Our Tiwi guide describes the history of the Catholic mission here. The sanctuary is an interesting mix of Catholic and Aboriginal symbology. Outside, we experience more history. This statue commemorates Matthias Ulugaru, who became the first Australian to capture a Japanese soldier in 1942. A prop from a crashed Japanese plane sits beside the mission radio shack where the message warning Darwin of the Japanese attack was sent. Next stop is a small museum. There are no caves in Tiwi country, 
So Tiwi art takes the form of intricately patterned totems, especially funereal totems. Weapons were made of ironwood. On the ceiling of the Tiwi Islands Art Gallery, we see some of the traditional patterns. Even the street signs are works of art here. Our guide takes us to meet his family. Our guide's totem is Dingo, and that's the pattern on his face. We walk through the smoke of special leaves to purify us for the dance performance next. Now, the ladies will start off. They'll do the slow prank. Us, we'll do the fast prank. up in Darwin, having come full circle with a couple of side trips. We disembark and thank the crew of the Coral Discoverer for a truly memorable trip. We have a little time to kill before our flight to Sydney, so we visit the Botanical Garden. We later found out the snake was fake.
then back to the airport to start our long flights home. Thanks to the Zegram staff for making everything run on time and making the logistics look easy. Thanks to our lecturers for patiently explaining to us what we were seeing and answering even the silliest questions. And a special thanks to our fellow travelers for your good humor, curiosity, and sense of adventure. <laughs>